So our group four project was focused around optimizing bread, um, and in particular baking gluten-free bread and gluten-included bread, and seeing if there was a notable difference. Uh, but before we can really talk about that, I think we need to understand what gluten actually is. Gluten is a family of proteins found in grains including wheat, rice, pulp, and barley. Of the gluten-containing grains, wheat is by far the most common. Two, the two main proteins in gluten uh, are glutamine and gliadine. Gliadine is responsible for most of the adverse health effects of gluten. When four mixes with the water, the gluten proteins form a form a sticky network that has a glue-like consistency. The glue-like property makes the dough elastic and gives bread the ability to rise during the baking. It also provides a chewy, satisfying texture. The use of gluten allows you to increase the water absorption when kneading dough, extend the shelf life of products, improve the structure and porosity, increase the specific volume of bread. And dry uh, gluten is also used for making mixtures uh, of uh, pasta and minced meat. And gluten is added to foods that need to be given a thick texture. So when baking bread, the way that you create a difference between whether you're baking gluten-free bread or gluten-included bread is the kind of flour that you use. Uh, if you will compare the composition of gluten and wheat flour, for example, per 100 grams of each one of those, in flour we will have 0 0.98 grams of fat, whether in gluten we will have 1.85 grams of fat. For protein we will have more in gluten, like 7 times more uh, than in the wheat flour, but at the same time we will have 7 times less uh, of the carbohydrates than in wheat flour. So as we can see, it has its own privileges, its own advantages and disadvantages. So, quick bit of biology, when we're talking about the baking of bread, we're talking about something called ethanol fermentation, which is the production of uh, ethanol or alcohol. Um, but to better understand this and how it works in baking of bread, we need to talk about glycolysis. Glycolysis literally means to break down sugars. Glyco, sugar, lysis, to break down. So, if we take our sugar, for example here, uh, glucose, it is being broken down into ATP, and a three carbon, uh, two three carbon molecules called pyruvate. All of this requires oxygen to be present. This is actually the same system of how our body does aerobic respiration, with um, uh, with a little bit extra going into the kind of citric acid uh, cycle as well, um, and then without oxygen into anaerobic respiration. But in terms of uh, baking bread and going into alcohol fermentation, it's this bit of pyruvate that's produced, this three carbon molecule that we're interested in. So this is where it gets a little bit more complicated, so stay with me. As you remember from glycolysis, we uh, ended up with a pyruvate molecule and it looks like this. Um, and what's going to happen during alcohol fermentation is that the carboxyl group is going to be stripped away through pyruvate decarboxylase. So what I mean by that is that this bit I circled here uh, gets removed and you should recognize that because all this is is a carbon dioxide molecule So this gets removed and then what remains of the pyruvate is then reduced into ethanol Now this is important uh, in our context with bread making because um, Because of the most uh, used thing to do this is yeast So yeast digests sugars through glycolysis as mentioned earlier then undergoes alcohol fermentation That CO2 that is produced um, is actually what makes bread rise. So the CO2 uh, that was uh, stripped away from the pyruvate, the, uh, the carboxylase group, uh, is what is responsible for making bread rise. And that also means that with yeast uh, you turning pyruvate into ethanol, that there is actually ethanol traces in bread. Sure, a lot of it gets baked off, but there is an alcohol percentage in bread. So now it, it was time to bake the two pieces of bread, the gluten-free one and the one with gluten. Um, the recipe I'll be using I'll show on screen now, along with the bread maker that it would be made in. Uh, when baking the two loaves, it was very important that consistency was key. Uh, the same recipe was used with the only difference uh, being the flour that was used to, to get the gluten and not get the gluten, but the quantities 
remain the same to make sure that there is consistency within our experiment um, so that we cannot place um, something like a something like a taste difference down to one having more sugar or the, the other one being more salty or something like that. So there was consistency uh, within both. Uh, the bread maker was set to the same time, same temperature uh, and same recipe. So on screen, I'll chuck up the pictures of, uh, of what the bread looked like. And um, as you can see, the gluten-free bread doesn't look incredible in all honesty. Um, it didn't stay together. It didn't go in that loaf shape. Um, has quite a, a disgusting white color. And the inside isn't fluffy whatsoever. Uh, and in all honesty, it doesn't taste great, <laughs> to be honest. Um, compare this to the bread that was made with gluten. Um, it looks a lot nicer. Uh, and it, it looks like that traditional kind of what you would expect bread to look like. So these different results got me and my group thinking about why there was such a notable difference between the gluten-free bread and the gluten-included bread. Um, and it actually comes down to something that Polina and Vicar both touched on earlier in the video. And that's to do with the recipe. When I made the... Uh, gluten-free bread and the gluten-included bread, I used the same recipe for both, which was a traditional bread recipe. Yet there are differences in a traditional gluten-free bread recipe that I didn't include those aspects, stuff that Polina will touch on now. So gluten-free baking often uses natural gum or thickener to mimic the elasticity of gluten. Uh, and gluten is a concept that combines a group of similar proteins contained in the seeds of cereal, especially wheat, rye and barley, and the term gluten usually refers to the proteins of the prolamine and gluten fractions. So all of them are being used to thicken the bread and make the structure, the dough, more um, elastic. That's our group 4 project uh, on gluten-free bread versus gluten included. Thank you.